So how do you think we should do the intro? Simple. Okay. 3D printers are cool. Real cool. So I bought one. Too simple? In today's video, we'll go over the general features and setup of this bamboo printer, and then we'll do three knife making related projects. So let's get started. The printer I purchased after extensive research was this Bamboo P1P. This company has really made a splash in the 3D printing world with an easy to use printer that prints significantly faster than its competition. The P1P is an open air model, however, they also offer a P1S that is enclosed, which will help you print some of the higher end plastics. If I had a chance to do it all over again, I would have spent the extra dollars to buy the P1S. However, note there is a conversion kit on Bamboo Labs website to upgrade your P1P to a P1S if you're in the same boat as I am. The packing was done very nicely and the setup process was straightforward. One really cool thing about this machine is that it's Wi-Fi connected and you can send jobs to it from your computer or your cell phone. There is a quick start guide in the box and this got me up and going in very short order. The printer comes with a roll of basic PLA filament, which is a great starting place for getting accustomed to printing and a good option for some around the house items. For some of the components I'll be showing off today, I used PLA Plus, which is a tougher version of PLA with a higher impact resistance, and PETG, which can handle higher temperatures than PLA or PLA Plus. There are more exotic filaments you can use with this machine, but I haven't messed around with them quite yet. Once you're up and running, you can select a print file that has been preloaded into the SD card called a Benchy to test your printer. This is a small boat that has become a standard test in the 3D printing community. It has some complicated components for printing like bridges and overhangs, which makes it an effective design to make sure everything is working as it should. The Benchy is also kind of endearing, so I find myself printing one with each new roll of filament I load into the machine. This is a good time to note that the P1P comes with an onboard camera and light. This does allow for remote viewing on your PC or phone, however the stream is pretty laggy, so the remote viewing is really only good for determining if something is going wrong with your print or not, which is a plenty good feature in my opinion. The video stream can also be recorded and downloaded from the SD card onto your machine manually. Alrighty, so now that we're up and running, let's talk about using this printer for knife making. I have three examples so far of knife making applications, the first being 3D printed handle scales. When thinking about what actual knife components a 3D printer could make, the natural inclination is to think handle scale, so I figured I'd give it a go. Step one is going to be designing the handle scales in Fusion 360 using my bird and trout template as a guide. This workflow could also be used to prototype new knife designs without having to spend the time to actually make the knife in the shop, and honestly this prototyping use case can be a more practical application for the printer than what I'm about to do. Now I won't be going into depth on how to use Fusion 360, but if y'all want a basic tutorial on this free program with a focus on knife making, let me know in the comments below. This workflow that I'll be demonstrating with these scales can be applied to anything you want to design and 3D print. You start with modeling in a CAD software, then exporting your model as a STEP or STL file, followed by importing that file into a 3D slicer. The 3D slicer that I'm using came with the Bamboo printer for free and has been awesome to use. In the Bamboo Studio, you have a ton of control over how your models will print. As you get more comfortable with 3D printing, you can start playing with these settings, however, the stock templates for each type of filament work pretty darn good. For these handle scales, I'll be printing them with 100% infill, since I wanted them to just be solid plastic. I also printed out the blade blank at the same thickness as my 1080 bar stock in the shop. This will allow me to assemble the knife and make sure I like the feel of it, as well as use the blade template to trace onto the steel later. The printing went very well overall, and I only had to go back to my CAD design a few times to make adjustments and then reprint. This was primarily because my tolerances were too tight on the holes for the Galso fasteners. I ended up increasing the sizes of these holes in my model by around 10% to have a snug fit with the fasteners. With the pieces printed, I can then assemble the plastic prototype. For the fun of it, I then started finishing out a blade to be used with these scales as a demo. For those of you who aren't knife makers, this is a small taste of the craft of knife making. Here is some of that footage at an extremely fast speed.
I had to stop myself here and let me know if this happens to y'all as well, but I was making this knife, this demo knife for 3D printed handle scales to the same level of quality and finish that I would a normal knife that would actually leave my shop and go to a friend or a family member or a customer. Whereas in reality, it's just a demo for 3D printed handle scales and doesn't need to be uh, that precise. So I kind of laughed to myself there because I have the tendency to do that on a lot of projects and kind of have to take a step back and, and realize uh, what the end goal here is, which is testing out 3D scales and seeing what they feel like, look like, and how they would be finished on a knife. I have two different materials here that I printed out. I have PLA Plus, which is a nice tough material that's easy to print. However, the negative of PLA Plus is if you're in a super hot climate and you leave this in your car, it could deform at higher temperatures. I'll put the temperatures up on the screen, but it's, it's north of 100 and something degrees before these will start to deform. And then there's PET-G, which is much more uh, resistant to temperature and also a fairly tough material from what I understand. Also kind of easy to print, uh, yet not as easy to print as uh, PLA. I'll be attaching these scales to the knife with these Galso fasteners. I'm a big fan of these and use them whenever I'm doing removable handle scales. And then I will try to finish out these scales, probably with some high grit sandpaper, maybe the buffer, and then we'll see how it feels. Well, the verdict is that they actually do feel pretty good in the hand and they serve their intended purpose, which is being a set of 3D printed handle scales that are cheap and easy to produce. Now, with that being said, I won't be using 3D printed handle scales on any of my heirloom quality handmade custom knives. However, I do see a situation where you could use scales like this on a shop knife or a tool in the shop that doesn't need to be at that quality standard but just needs to work. These materials are pretty tough, but if you made a set of handle scales for a tool in your shop and it never broke, you can easily in a few minutes print out another handle scale and be back in business. Overall, the test was cool. I can see myself using 3D printed handles on something in the future, and I'm happy that it can hold these tolerances. So let's get on to the next project. The second of the three projects I'll be showing off today is using this printer to make hidden tang fittings templates. I recently used this technique on my Samurai Challenge build and it worked great. The process here is to measure your tang for slot dimensions, then draw up your guard or spacer in Fusion 360. This gives you the option of printing out multiple versions of the guard so that you can see what it will look like on the knife before grinding them out of stainless steel or whatever material you'll be using. Once you have the design that you like, you can use the template to trace it out on the actual guard. I found these printed guards and spacers to be extremely handy in my last project and can easily see myself using this technique frequently in the future. The last major knife making related project I'll be outlining today is a height scribing jig for use on a surface plate. When making high-end custom knives, you'll find yourself scribing in target grind lines frequently for both grinding on the blade itself and the handle. This fixture is more geared towards the handle and specifically the handle of hidden tang knives where you'll be shaping the handle blocks. For both large buoys and hidden tang kitchen knives, a jig like this will be very handy. I designed this jig to be able to bolt to a standard 321 block since these are very common for knife makers to have in their shop and they're also fairly cheap. The precision ground steel of a 321 block also provides a solid base for the fixture. Like previously with the handle scales, I drew up this assembly in Fusion 360 and printed it out on my bamboo machine from PLA+. Now I'll be honest, I went through at least 10 iterations of this design, making slight changes here and there before everything fit right. The hardest part was getting the threads all printed right so that the user could use either 3D printed hardware or standard steel hardware from the store. I designed this fixture to be able to hold a fine point sharpie since this is my preferred marking instrument for handle blocks, but it can also easily hold a pencil or carbide scribe. While I haven't been able to put this guy to work quite yet on a build, it appears to be exactly what I need for making handles, and I'm excited to test it out in the future. So if you want to see it in action, make sure to stay tuned to the channel. I'm contemplating making a run of these and selling them on my website, so if anyone is interested in this fixture, 
please let me know in the comments section so I can gauge demand. Alrighty, so I just scratched the surface here for the applications of a 3D printer. And I can guarantee if you get one of these in your hands, your creativity will likely run wild. However, if you do not have a creative bone in your body, there are plenty of free templates online for you to use. I've really been enjoying downloading templates off of the website Printables and post templates of my own there for use by the community. For instance, you can see here, I've designed some handles for my needle files, a pencil sharpener holder, and various other things of that nature. I plan on doing a more detailed review of the machine on my side channel, Redbeard Engineered, in the future, where I'll be showing off some of these non-knife making projects, so make sure to get subscribed over there if you're interested in that. Until next time, I hope you all have a great weekend, and like always, I'll catch you all on the flip side.